And what's going on, you guys? This be your boy, Scotty by Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new episode of Yes for the Mess, where we talk about celebrity gossip, hot topics, and all things reality TV based. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday, and I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving as well, and I intend on doing the exact same. I know I look rough. Because, you know, I canceled my haircut appointment Thursday because I was just that damn depressed and I just didn't even want to get my haircut. But I'm here, okay? I'm definitely here, and um, I'm here to get y'all this live. Now, I was going to wait until – I was going to do the video, but then I'm just going to, you know, save it for tomorrow. But then again, I don't want to do anything tomorrow. So what I decided to do was go ahead and go live and talk about it now, and then, you know, tomorrow will just be y'all getting the Bunny Blue collab that I did, you know, tomorrow – or whatnot so that's all y'all gonna get tomorrow because i ain't doing no damn content tomorrow like period like i i just need to take me some time and just rest and lay down and get my thoughts together and all of that good stuff um but before we get into anything um i just want to thank all of y'all i want to thank everybody y'all have been really y'all have been really checking up on me um i have been very open about where i am mentally it has not been the best the last week at all um it's trying to get better, but it's not quite there yet. But I'm going to always be open and honest about everything, every little thing that I go through. I'm going to always be open and honest about that. But I do appreciate you guys being very supportive and things like that. But listening to a lot of sounds of blackness and a lot of um, Mary Mary and uh, things like that. You know, I've been listening to a whole lot of inspirational music, a lot of Mary J. Blige and stuff like that, just to get my mood corrected. Okay. Because nobody likes Scotty when Scotty is down and out and in a dark place. Nobody really likes that. So I'm trying to get myself out of it. And I'm just looking for my inner peace. Cause right now I don't have that, you know? So right now I'm looking for my inner peace and I'm really trying to get myself right and get myself together. But I do want to send a special shout out to those of you that have been looking out for me and, um, you know, just trying to um, give me words of encouragement. In the words of sounds of blackness, as long as you keep your head to the sky, you can win. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. But anyways, um, before we get into anything in regards to what we're here to talk about, let's talk about what we got coming up. Now, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, of course, and I've decided to, instead of putting this video out on December the 1st, I decided to give you guys a Thanksgiving treat and put out this brand new collaboration, the episode five of One on One, and it will be featuring Miss Bundy Blue, honey. Okay, so shout out to Bundy Blue for actually doing this with me. I really appreciate it. Um... It's going to be an hour-long conversation. We're going to talk about, like, her life in New Orleans. We're going to talk about her life as a YouTuber. How did the Ooh Ladies First panel get started? All types of good stuff. Like, we had a, a great conversation. Anytime I talk to Bunny, it's always a good conversation. So make sure you guys get into that. And then on Friday, it's the Boys Night Out panel. We will be back together. All It's a five, so i all back together because half of us weren't even there the last time the show was on. But shout out to Beasley and Jeremy Speaks for holding it down with Josiah and T. But, um, yes, um, we will be back on Friday um and I just finished planning the show so make sure you guys get into that and then on Saturday be sure to tune in for the Love and Marriage Huntsville um live review all right so with that being said that's pretty much all that we got coming up on the horizon so we're about to go ahead and get into what we're here to talk about and that is the mess it's 48 of you guys up in here so far um but we're gonna go ahead and get into it so first things first this literally just came out before I even did this live y'all this literally came out um, as I was planning the show for tonight, y'all. And it's about um, Tiana Taylor and Iman. Okay, that's this is about. And apparently filed for divorce back in January, honey. She filed for divorce back in January, and the divorce documents then came out, and it's a whole lot of, whole lot of. Okay, so let's do it like this. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it, y'all. So. This is coming from the neighborhood talk, which um, th which this story originally came from TMZ, y'all. So it says court documents show cheating scandals did contribute to Tiana Taylor filing for divorce from Iman Shumpert, um, despite her saying infidelity wasn't a reason early on. Also says that he was jealous that paparazzi asked him to move out of her pictures. Okay, now let's get into the story at hand. So it says. 
We exclusively reported that Tiana Taylor and Iman were splitting after being married for years. While Tiana initially claimed that their split had nothing to do with cheating, but it appears that it did. And it included some sprinkles of jealousy and narcissism. Now, according to TMZ, um, Tiana Taylor secretly filed for divorce almost a year ago. In her filing, she stated, Iman would grow annoyed when they would attend public events together and photo ops would ask him to step out of the frame. That was just one of the examples that she gave to show Iman was allegedly jealous of her success. She says that when Iman signed a $40 million contract with the NBA um, Cleveland Cavaliers in 2015, that still wasn't enough to stop him from hating on her. This led to her dimming her spotlight to keep a peaceful marriage, and that included turning down music and acting gigs. She also alleged that he has been involved in several cheating scandals. Keep in mind, she previously stated infidelity wasn't a reason, but it appears that Tiana wasn't lying when she said, sometimes we say things that we really don't mean. Now, that was shade. That was definitely shade, okay? We know that was shade, honey. Okay, now... Let's see what's up in here. Now, this was the original post, right? This is the original post. And the original post stated, um, I, I, not too much on my bestie. In all fairness, Iman and I are separated and have been for a while. To be a thousand percent clear, infidelity ain't one of the reasons for our departure. We are still the best of friends, great business partners, and we are one hell of a team when it comes to co-parenting our two beautiful children. And most importantly, we are family. In the 10 years together and seven years married, we ain't ever played with or about that. We just keep y'all asses out the group chat, which is the reason we've been able to successfully and peacefully separate without all of the outside noise. And the only reason I'm even sharing this part of the chat is because the narratives are getting a little out of hand and it's unfair to all parties involved. I hope this provided some clarity for y'all. Okay, now, auntie taking y'all back out the chat. Okay, bye. So that was the um, original statement that she made when they first, you know, decided to separate and do all that good stuff, y'all. That was the first thing. So my opinions on this situation is this right here. It just seems to me like everybody's divorcing. Everybody's breaking up. And it just make people like me be so scared when it comes down to the love thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It'd be making me scared. Because all these couples that everybody be, you know, having as their relationship goes, oh, I want to be like them. Oh, I want to be like them. Oh, that's the type of man I want. Oh, you know, all that stuff. That's what they be saying. And so it'd be so crazy to me when I be seeing these same couples that everybody put on a pedestal, y'all, break apart. And I'm not saying this as a way to, you know, to to laugh at people that are going through um, the things that they are going through because it's nothing to laugh at. It's really, it's really nothing to laugh at. Like it's, it's, it's never nothing to laugh at when it comes down to a family being broken apart and kids are involved, businesses involved, all that type of stuff is involved. So nobody wants to laugh at this type of shit because it ain't nothing funny. You know what I'm saying? So no, we're not laughing at that at all. But when it comes down to it, it's like, why say that, um, why say that it ain't no infidelity when it really was some? Um, now, we really, now, what you could have done was keep it 100. That's what you could have done. But I get that you didn't want nobody in your business. But it just make you look crazy, you know, going on down the line with it. Only because of the fact that you set up here and you were trying to make it make it seem like, oh, these are narratives that people are putting out there and everybody's lying and all this other stuff. And it ain't got nothing to do with nobody lying. It's more so that that was the truth and you just didn't want nobody in your business. And I ain't really mad about it. But for us to find out down the line that he was cheating and there was cheating scandals and there was narcissistic um, qualities in the same man that you were taking up for. It's kind of like, girl, what was the, what was your point? You know what I'm saying? But hopefully they're peacefully coexisting for the sake of their children and um, the sake of their business, their family, because like, just like she said, they're still family because they got kids together. So, I mean, 
all in all, um, I hope that they are all able to get past everything. You know what I'm saying? I look, I told y'all, I, I I want peace, so I want everybody else to have peace. That's all I'm saying. And on top of that, if there's a sex tape out there with Tiana and Iman out there somewhere, I want to see it. Okay? I want to see it. I want to see them bump and grind. Okay? I'm just being real with y'all. Like, I want to see them bump and grind. I want to see it because I know they was hunching down and I want to see it. I've always wondered how it was with them. I want to see it. So if that makes me weird, I'm a weird mother then. Because I want to see it. I'm just saying. Can't say it enough. I want to see it. And I know I'm not the only one that wants to see it. I'm sure there's many people that want to see it. Okay? But anyway. I'm just saying. But anyway, y'all, let's continue on with the very next story, y'all. Let's go ahead. Now, in irrelevant love and hip-hop news, these two women are now in the blogs once again. Now, I don't know if you guys know this or not. Or I, don't, I don't know if you guys know this or not, or I don't know if you guys know, but you just weren't interested in it at all. But uh, Hazel E. did an interview with Unwind with Tasha K. And y'all already know, whenever somebody do an interview with Unwound with Tasha K, it's going to be some bullshit to come behind it. Y'all already know that, right? So, Hazel E. did an interview with Unwound with Tasha K. And baby, she spoke on Tierra Marie, and that brought Tierra Marie out of her damn cage. Okay? Because we ain't heard from Tierra Marie in a long time. And Love and Hip Hop Hollywood ain't even been on the air. I think it's canceled because we ain't seen it. And ain't nobody even announced no air date for that show to ever come back. So ever since the pandemic, Love and Hip Hop Hollywood has been gone, honey. And that's the one that we really, really want. But that's another story. However, she made some dis- she made some accusations about Miss Tierra Marie that I wasn't expecting her to make. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get into what Hazel E said about Tierra Marie. And after we get into that, we're going to see what Tia Marie said in response. And after we see what she said in response, we're going to hear what I got to say about it. So let's go ahead and get into this clip that Reality Entertainment TV had posted. That's what we're about to go ahead and get into right now. Okay? I think this is, yeah, this is it right here. Hold on, y'all. Selling the tracks, right? I mean, well, Tia ate my what? Uh, it's giving you selling uh, for tracks, right? I mean, well, tear ate my. <laughs> what? Now, as you guys can see, this was the interview. This is part of the interview that everybody's talking about that um, Hazel E did with Tasha K. And in this interview, she said that Tierra ate her poom poom. She said that Tierra Marie ate a poom poom. That's what she said. Now, I don't know how true that shit is. I don't know how, what to make of it. But that's what she said now. I'm just a messenger. I ain't saying she did it. I ain't saying that Hazel's word is the Bible. I ain't saying none of that. I'm just telling y'all that that's what she said. All right? So don't, don't come over here and take your, take your nine millimeter and shoot me. I'm just telling y'all what this business is. I'm just giving y'all the tea, honey. This is what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the damn tea, and that's what we that's what we're doing. But yeah, that's what she said now. Now, after she said that and the guy win and the, and it got around the blogs and stuff like that, this is what Tierra Marie said. Now, Tierra Marie stated on her Instagram. I've spent the past year on a personal journey, getting to know myself and working on myself. And people say my name and slander me. I don't respond at all. But this time I will. The allegations made on me are completely false. I once looked at this woman like a sister, friend, and family. I refuse to respond with hate and anger. But what I will say is, Hazel, I wish you all the best in life. I hope one day you'll begin your journey of peace and healing. And God bless you and your family. Mm. That's what she said now. That's what she said.
That's definitely what she said. And that was a great response. I'm not going to lie. I'm proud of Tierra for that response. Okay? Hold on, y'all. That was a great response. And I appreciate that little response that she gave Hazel. Hazel was being messy. We got to be honest here. Hazel was being messy because I don't even see what her point was of even bringing that shit up. You know what I mean? Like, needless to say, even if she did eat your pom-pom, like, what make you think we give a f about her eating your pom-pom? Like, we didn't care when you claimed that Young Berg was doing it. We didn't even care then. So I'm trying to understand why you think we care now if she ate it. You understand me? Like, who cares? You know what I mean? And... It's just, it's just some things that are just better left unsaid. Like, to me, I, I just feel like some stuff don't need to be said. Like, some stuff you just need to let it go. Like, what is the fucking point of even mentioning this? You know what I'm saying? For what? Now, if Tiara found you and hauled off and slept up out of you, then your ass would be somewhere crying about it. Now, I get it. You and Tiara... Ain't got no good history. We do know that. Y'all ain't got no good history at all. We know that. We know that it's been a lot of accusations made amongst y'all. We know that too. Y'all ain't been cool for a very long time. We know that as well. But at the same time, to me, it's like, it's just, if you're not cool with Tierra no more, that's that's fine. Like, you ain't got to be cool with her. Y'all have gone through a lot of things in y'all friendship. So, you ain't really got to be cool with her if you don't really want to. But for you to put that out there about that girl... Just to slander her. Because that's the whole purpose of you doing it. Because I don't think that Tierra did that. I ain't saying that Tierra's above doing it. But I don't think she did that. And I feel like if she did do it, you would have said it a long time ago. All them arguments y'all got into on Love and Hip Hop. I think that you would have said it much long ago. But while we're on the topic... We're going to go ahead and we're going to get into some of the comments that uh, responded to this stuff. Let's get into some of the comments, y'all. Now, this is what was said. Now, it says, Tierra is in her healing era and responded the best way ever. We know Tierra can sing and is also an actress. What does Hazel do? She's miserable. Somebody else stated, Tierra did her dirty in the beginning, though. She knows she did. I won't put ish past Tierra when Hazel is the reason you got put on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood anyway. And that is a lie. She, that Hazel is not the reason. Okay? Hazel is not the reason why Tierra was on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Do you not remember that Tierra Marie was on Love and Hip Hop New York first? Sometimes people forget that. But she was on Love and Hip Hop New York first. She was on the second season. With Chrissy and them, and she was um Emily B's friend. So she was definitely on Love and Hip Hop at the very beginning of Love and Hip Hop. She was on there the second season. And I remember that they was gonna put her on Love and Hip Hop Miami, and they was gonna have like Erica Mena, Tierra Marie, a couple of other girls on there. That's when they was first talking about a Love and Hip Hop Miami. So no, Hazel didn't have nothing to do with her being on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, okay. She had something to do with the show and with some of the other people, but she had nothing to do with Tierra. Tierra was already up in there, okay? Um, somebody said, Hazel and Natalie from Bad Girls Club give off the same energy. I, I, I believe that. Someone says, go on ahead and get that defamation lawsuit started. Hazel been alive since her accident to cover up her beat job. Oh, my God. Someone says, it's true, y'all. Hazel ain't lie. Hazel don't have ish to lose at, at all about talking about these allegations. She that's why that's why she lying because she ain't got nothing to lose. Um, but that's that's all I'm gonna say when it comes down to that. Like Hazel, Hazel do too much. And I can see now that she has not grown and she still do too much. That's how that's the that she still do the damn most. She be doing shit that she ain't really got to be doing, like for real. But um, we're gonna move on to the next thing. It looks like this live is moving a little bit faster. Cause I'm, I was, I'm trying to be here for only a, for an hour and an hour only. I ain't trying to go over an hour, honey. But anyway, we're about to go ahead and get into this story right here. It's more to say with um Joe Button and um and Diddy. 
right? It's more to talk about with that. Now, you know, the other, I think today I put out a video. I did put out a video today. It was called Surviving Diddy. And I was talking about all these stories that came out about Diddy and stuff like that. So, Joe Budden was one of the people that I talked about. And he did not want to discuss it and stuff like that. But now he's come out again. And he stated why he stayed silent on the Diddy and Cassie case. And he said he stayed silent due to legal reasons. And that Diddy is a viewer of the damn show of his. And the possibility of his rumored violent acts being true. So we're going to listen in on what Joe said. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to give y'all my commentary on it. Let's take a good listen at this, y'all. So tell us why you did it. Because you wanted to. Now you're about to explain. Oh, man. Well, I did it for legal reasons. One, I did it for a myriad of reasons. But first and foremost, the legal portion, which is, yeah, nah, y'all ain't about to clip clip me up or clip us up or clip this set up and just attach it to whatever story and narrative you want to attach it to. I've been on this here internet a long time time before some of y'all was born out there i know how it goes and i know how the blog sites work on a slow weekend mm -hmm. and i know what they do from experience because they mostly use me to do it i don't be trying to give them nothing i'd be in my little hut somewhere and they go dig something up they say that you respond to something that you're not responding to they take one piece and if they think you're talking about it they put some text to so tell us why you did it, because you wanted to. Now you're about to explain or play with us like that. Okay. One. Two, what if that nigga did all that shit he's accused of? Like in the rumors. I sound like a headache. Why would I want to inherit that? <laughs> what if he did some of that shit? Like the violent stuff. What headache would that? I don't understand. No. Because if he's going to do that to Kid Cudi... <laughs> you saying that yo Joe I, stop I, I, I'm keeping it cool I'm keeping it cool yo don't do that Joe come on no, come stop on. this ain't time for your okay, internet okay. shit that you do I'm this, not, is, this is real shit going on if some of that is true then why would you want to inherit that sound like a headache don't sound like the risk is worth the reward there to me and three in the event that some people did not believe all of the things that Cassie had to say in that civil suit, I don't think that last week was a good time to play with us like that. It seemed like something a responsible broadcast would do. We didn't do Fourth. That was four. Oh. It's a bunch. I could do this all day Keep long. Going. Keep going. I'm listening. That nigga listens to this podcast. What that mean? Let's go ice. It means that if you have never been on the other side of just accusations and stories being put out about you and now having to hear the news cycle of people that you know and how they report on it, there's a responsibility that comes with that. And regardless, of the Internet, again, like I said, has the luxury of forming an opinion. I think that nigga did it. I think he didn't do it. Whatever you think. Mm -hmm. Not just that. But but no, hold up. But right this second, I'll speak for me. I don't have proof that he raped. Seemed like something a responsible broadcast would do. Again, it, it is funny how you're toying question. See, Joe full of shit. Okay, Joe full of shit. I'm going to tell you why he full of shit. Okay, number one, you don't want to talk about Diddy and you want to give us these cockamamie reasons as to why you don't want to talk about Diddy. See, no, I'm not I'm not going to accept that, period. I'm not accepting it, not one bit. I'm not going to. I'm going to tell you why I'm not going to. Because you're full of it. You can speak on everything else. And talk about how other folks are not big. Like, it's so crazy how y'all men are so scared to speak on other 
fucking men, but quick to speak about the women and what they're dealing with in the blogs and all this other shit. But you can't speak on this. What's the point of having a podcast and talking about current events and talking about pop culture and talking about things that's going on, but you refuse to speak on this one topic? You won't speak on it because you're scared of him. That's why you don't want to speak on it. But you can speak on everything else, but you don't want to speak on it. It's given I'm a weak ass bitch. It's given I'm a pussy. It's given I'm scared of Diddy. It's given I don't want him to do me like he allegedly did Wale. That's what the fuck is given. But you could talk about Megan. You could talk about Cardi. You could shit on everybody else. But Big Bad Diddy got allegations against him and none of y'all can talk about it. Why not? Why y'all can't talk about it? Because he watches the show. I just feel like if you're going to have a podcast and you're going to talk about certain shit, you need to be able to talk about everything. Like nobody should be damn exempt from nothing. I don't care what nobody say. Nobody should be exempt. I don't care what relationship you got with them. Nobody should be exempt from shit. Period. But you're not going to talk about it because you got your own allegations against you. With, that involves harming a woman. You got your own accusations against you. So, of course, you ain't going to say nothing. Or because you're aware and you're seeing stuff with your own two damn eyes. My thing is this. If you're not going to talk about it on your podcast and just leave it on the playground, don't mention it at all if you're not going to talk about it. If you ain't going to talk about it at all, don't talk, don't, don't bring it up. Don't bring it up. Don't, don't talk about how folks going to say you biased. And, no, if you're not going to speak on this whole, on this thing in its entirety, I don't want to hear you speak on it. Honestly. I don't want to hear you talking about it. Because all you motherfuckers are so scared of this man. But y'all be having so much to say when it's a woman. Oh, yeah. She, yeah, yeah. That bitch did that. Yeah, yeah. That bitch lying. Yeah, that bitch wanted money. That's the, that's the first thing you motherfuckers say. See, for me, I give it to everybody. Give it to everybody. Whether you're a male or a female, I'm going to give it to every fucking body. My mouth a freak. It'll go after a nigga or a woman. It does not matter who you are. If I got an opinion on you, I got an opinion on you. And that's just that. But like I said, you ain't clean, so you're going to shut the fuck up. And I guess you're doing the right thing, I guess. But you want to say it's because you ain't got no proof. But you had so much to say about making a stallion, but you didn't have no proof about that, though. It doesn't make any sense. At all. It doesn't. It literally to me. Okay? At all. But okay. We're going to we're going to sit here and we're going to pretend like it does. OK, so that's what we're going to do for the time being. We're going to sit here and pretend like all this makes a lot of sense to, uh, to us and everybody else. We're going to sit here and make and make it look like that. Right. So let's pretend like it makes sense. We're going to pretend like it makes sense for the rest of this live. That's what we're going to do. And if you're down with me, say, yeah, we're going to pretend like it makes sense, even though we know that it doesn't make no sense. But we're going to pretend like it do. And that's all I got for that. Um, I 
So now we get into Harv. Um, he was someone that used to work with Diddy, right? And he is being sued for SA as well and grooming and negligence, okay? And this all of this is going on less than a week after Diddy was accused of RAPing and SEX trafficking Cassie. All of this is coming out along that time. So this is what the neighborhood talk is saying. Now, it appears that the bad boys are allegedly living up to their names. According to a report by the Rolling Stone, a former president of Bad Boy Entertainment is being sued by his ex-assistant for using his position of authority as her boss to groom and exploit and SA her. Per the report, Harv Perry, the former producer, uh, president of Bad Boy, is, a, is accused of preying on the Jane Doe plaintiff on multiple occasions in New York City and other locations throughout the country. He is accused of SAing the plaintiff for over a year before allegedly SAing her. Wait, he was he was S E actually harassing her first for over a year before it allegedly S A in her. She says during the years of 2016 to 2017, she suffered physical, emotional, and psychological injuries, include uh, along with the pain and suffering. The woman is asking for damages that will fully and fairly compensate her. This news comes less than a week after Diddy was accused of RAPE and SEX trafficking by singer Cassie. Perry met Diddy, um, met Diddy when they were students at Howard University. So let's look at the comments. Wake it up. The reckoning is coming. Yes, Ashley. Can we get Aubrey on the stand? Harp always looked like a creep, so I totally believe it, okay? Somebody said, damn. Somebody said, well, let me go file my civil suit because they touched me too in 2013. Someone said, Cassie did something. Whether people can comprehend it or not, her speaking up is going to open the floodgates. Not only did she collect her coin, but now reputations are stained and they are definitely stained okay because uh i feel like diddy is about to lose a lot of sh that he once had because baby it ain't looking too motherfucking good for this mother like at all it's not looking good for him it is not okay now let's get into some things here i'm not surprised by this because just like somebody in the comments said, Harv always looked like he was a creep. He always looked like that. Do y'all remember him? He was on Making a Band all the time. Like, he would always come to the Making a Band house and stuff like that. Like, I always thought that he was a creep. And you hear stories like this all the time where women be working for these men at these big corporations and big companies and stuff like that. And the women are an object of... SA or harassment and things like that. They are the victims of that. We see this all the time. So I am not surprised. And by them working with Diddy and Diddy doing the things that he did, I'm sure it happened. I'm sure that it happened. And didn't that psychic already say that it was going to it wasn't going to start. It was going to start with one person and then everybody was going to come out. That's exactly what's going on right now. But you mother don't want nobody to say nothing about it because it had. Oh, it happened a long time ago. Oh, why they saying something now? Oh, why now? Why this? Why that? As if you don't know that victims of assault or abuse or anything like that don't speak out right away because of the because of these type of reactions. Y'all don't want to believe a mother when they come out the first time. So what make you think they want to say something right then? Because y'all are skeptical. Y'all don't want to believe when it's right in front of your face. You don't. Be quick to tell somebody they lying. Then when it comes out to be true, then y'all say, oh, well, I believed you the whole time. No, the fuck you didn't. Shut the fuck up. You didn't believe them the whole time. Because if you believed them the whole time, we wouldn't be having this conversation. You didn't believe him. You didn't want to believe. And that's the truth here.
I believe he did it. And Cassie speaking up has given these women the courage to come out and speak their motherfucking truth. And I and I honestly can tell y'all, speak your truth, baby. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. I'm telling you. In any way that you can give yourself that closure or whatever, do what you got to do. But I really wish that these motherfuckers can go to jail. I'm telling you. Because I just feel like the whole payout, and I know it's a civil case and stuff, so I don't need nobody coming to me, trying to correct me a million times in the comments as if they don't read the comments and see somebody else already didn't tell me what it was. I don't need nobody correcting me. I know it's a civil case. What I'm saying is, I feel like the money thing only allows them to keep doing what they're doing and what or what they've been doing. Let's say that. Because I still, because if they was doing it all the time back then, I feel like they're still doing it now. I don't know if y'all agree with that, but I definitely feel like if it was happening like that back then, it's definitely still happening now. Period. It's still happening. Still happening. And no one's going to tell me differently. At all. Just saying. Just saying. Like I said, he looked like a creep too. Like there ain't nothing I would put. There ain't there ain't nothing that I wouldn't believe. He looked like a damn creep. He looked like he down with that. Like he looked like he followed women to the bathroom and stuff. Like he'll probably look through look through his blinds in his office and watch a woman go to the bathroom and follow her up in there. Like that's the type of shit he do. Like he just seemed real weird to me. Let me see. I'm waiting for his male victims, too, because they coming, in my opinion. And guess what? When they do, I'm going to be right here reporting on the story. I'm definitely going to be right here reporting on it. No matter what nobody say, I'm talking about it. I don't care. I'm talking about it when it does come out. I'm telling you that. I'm, pre I'm preparing to bring up the next story, y'all. Okay, so we're at the 40 minute mark. So it looked like I'm gonna have this down for an hour like I wanted to. All right, so the next story up is Mr. Cuba Gooden Jr. Now he also, he is also somebody else that got an SA case against him. You know what I'm saying? He he got another one. And I'm just like, <laughs> what the f not another one. So Let's see where we at here. Let me put this on the screen so y'all can see it. Let me remove this overlay for y'all. All right. Now, Cuba Gooden Jr. is hit with two new SA lawsuits, y'all. Two SA lawsuits. They getting everybody. And some of these people I really, really love and enjoy. But they getting y'all. And if y'all did that, y'all deserve it. Okay. But here we go, y'all. After Cuba Gooden Jr. was slapped with two lawsuits on Wednesday from two women seeking damages from the anguish they endured when the Oscar winner groped and forcefully kissed them in separate incidents in NYC. One plaintiff somewhat naively. <gasps> oh, shit, excuse me agreed to wait on Gooding Jr.'s table at the LAVO nightclub on the evening of September the 9th, 2018. That wasn't that long ago. After her co-worker complained that the movie star previously subjected her to inappropriate behavior, the court papers viewed by post by the Post alleged. Ooh, wait a minute. So that's what is going on with Cuba Gooding. Now, Nika at night, who was one of my favorite content creators, by the way, I really like her. Um, she says they quickly get them suits in before the extended time for the Survivors Act uh, expires on Friday, November 24th. And that's exactly what somebody said in the comments. They getting them out before Black Friday, honey. Okay, they getting them out for Black Friday, Black Friday. 
And I must say that I ain't surprised. I ain't surprised. Cause baby, I believe he did that. Cuba get Cuba give me that too. I'm sorry to say that, but he do give me that. But a lot of you know what? What I'm going to say is this is fucking triggering. And the only incident that I'm going to say something about is the one that I've already discussed. These men really use their power over people. They really be doing stuff like that. And it catches you off guard when they when they do stuff like that. Now, now I talked about this before a long time ago. This is during the early days of my channel. Other things I do want to discuss, but I can't right now. But I'm going to discuss this one because it's already been talked about up here. I will never forget working at a Dollar General years ago. This was nine years ago now when this happened. It's about to be 10 years ago next year. Nine years ago when I worked at Dollar General, a man who I'd never seen before came up in that fucking store. And I was, he asked me for help. And I guess he sensed that I was a little sissy. I guess he sensed that. He asked me what something was. I showed him where it was. He asked me what something else was. I showed him where it was too. He would not let me out of his sight. And I, I had to pee. I got tired of walking around and stuff with him. I had to pee. Right? So this man gave me his phone number. He didn't even give me his real name. When he gave me his phone number, he said his name was Good Good. Okay, whatever. Never intended on calling this man. He asked me where the bathroom was, and I pointed to it. He was like, okay. So I ran off so I can go to the bathroom. And I'm going to tell you like this. I went to that fucking bathroom to use the bathroom. I washed my hands. And as I was washing my hands, this man came from behind me and grabbed me by my behind and asked me who was hitting. And when I asked him what was he doing, he, he asked me to go in a stall with him. And I said no. And he tried to force me in a stall with him. And not only did he do that, he stuck his tongue in my mouth and I had to fight him up off of me. He was a little bit bigger than me. I had to fight him up off of me and I ran out of the fucking bathroom because he stood in front of the door so I couldn't get out and he turned the lights off and I ran out of the door. And when I tried to tell my co-workers about this situation, they thought it was funny. Nobody cared. They thought it was hilarious. They thought it was funny. And I'm standing here traumatized. Because I literally was fighting for my life in this fucking bathroom. And not to mention, I'm trying to take a break. And they tell me to come to register for. And guess who's at register for? The same man that just tried to attack me. So, no. These stories, like, kill me. So, it's like, men do stuff like that just because they feel that they can. Like, it's like they can smell um, gullible people. They smell something. You know, smell people that they feel is naive. Because back then, I was very fucking naive, okay? So, and this is a story that I've talked about before on my platform. And I be 
like shaken up by certain things. Like sometimes, like some, like I have to really. That's why I have to get to know a man before I have sex with him. Because sometimes, like when I'm around him for the first time by my damn self, I be like, and they be wondering what was wrong with me. But I don't never really tell them. Like I think um, I told Bando this story a couple of weeks ago, but it was just like. You know, that's why I be, so if y'all want to know why I go in, a lot of the times when we are talking about SA victims or people that's gone through stuff like that, you know, I always go in and I'm always defending the person that has been through that type of thing. You know what I mean? I'm always defending the victims and not to mention my mother has had her experience with that. So it's just like, like I said, for me, that happened to me and people thought that that was funny. So yeah, that's why I can't get with people that think that um, SA don't exist or anytime somebody speaks on SA, it's, it's something that is looked down upon or or you lying. Nobody has a reason to lie about nothing like this. Nobody has any reason to lie about nothing like that. Because the man that did that to me, he did that to me March of 2014. I saw that man one more time after that. I saw that man one more time. I saw him in November of 2014. That was the last time I saw him again. He came up in that store and he came to my register. I knew that dark skin and those pretty brown eyes from a mile away. When I saw him coming, I had some, I ran off and I had somebody else work my register. I did not want to deal with him. I did not. I thought he was going to come back for more. I haven't seen that man since, but I'll tell you this. I'll never forget that face. I'll never forget how he looks. I'll never forget those brown eyes. I will never forget it. I see his face right now as I talk about this. So, yeah, that's why I feel the way that I do about these cases. But I'm going to shut the fuck up because, I, like I said, I'm triggered and I'm not going to um, do this on camera. Let me go to the last story, okay? Um, very last story involves Jamie Foxx. Another story that I was now this was the one that I wasn't expecting. And I probably wasn't expecting because I love him so much. That's probably why I wasn't expecting that. But um, this is what was stated, okay? So um, let's get into it. So it says that Jamie Foxx is being hit with a lawsuit for, sec for SA that allegedly took place in 2005 on the rooftop of Catch NYC. Now, TMZ obtained documents where the plaintiff says that she entered the restaurant and realized that Jamie was sitting close by. Her friend asked the star, apparently intoxicated, to take a photo with the two of them, in which he replied, sure, baby, anything for you. As they continue taking photos, she claims that she looked like Gabrielle Union after saying, wow, you have that supermodel body and you smell so good. After the photos, the plaintiff says that, that, that Mr. Fox allegedly pulled her to the back of the rooftop by her arm and placed his hands on her waist before moving them up her top, grabbing her breast. And then he allegedly put his paint, his hands in her pants and pulling and putting his finger in and mid her V the JJ. She says that she she says this was witnessed by her friend and security. And then the plaintiff says that she suffered emotional distress, pain, and suffering, and had to have medical treatment due to the SA abuse, assault, and battery. She's suing the restaurant and Jamie for um, comp uh, compens... Oh, I can't pronounce the word, but it's for damage, okay? Um, yeah. A lot. A lot, 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 a lot. 
the these men are something else. And they are not to be fucking trusted. They're not. They do stuff like this for power. They do stuff like this because they can. They do stuff like this because they feel like they should. They do stuff like this because they got the power to. They do stuff like this because they can smell the sh- on it on you. Like, I, I and listen, I love Jamie Foxx. Love his music. Love his love him as an actor and comedian. But if you did that to this lady, you deserve everything you get. And that's just the truth. You deserve everything you get if you did that to this lady. Period. And there's nothing else to be said about that. If you did that to this lady, then you deserve whatever you get. I don't care. Like, and I know that people are going to find ways to excuse this behavior, but it's nothing to excuse. It's nothing to excuse. Nothing. We got to stop excusing these abusers. We can downgrade everybody else, but it's something about predators and abusers that we let them get away with. We will banish our gay cousin or our gay brother or our gay aunt or gay uncle from the family dinners. But at that same family dinner, the family pedo is still sitting there enjoying a plate of greens, fried chicken, and macaroni and cheese and mashed potatoes with everybody else at the table. Where he probably touched several of the kids that's in the living room playing around. We always show grace to these abusers and, 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 and predators. We always show so much grace to them when they don't deserve it. And we are quick to believe them and we are quick to take their sides and we are quick to malign the people that are the victims at the hands of them. And not only do we do that, But then we don't protect the victims of these people. And then they grow up and they go through life with low self-esteem, hating themselves, blaming themselves for the stuff that happened to them. Something that they didn't even ask for. Taking responsibility For something that had nothing to do with them. Nothing to do with them. What are we taking? Why are we holding ourselves accountable for something that we did not do to ourselves? Why are we doing it? Why are we walking around with guilt for something we did not do? Why are we being ostracized for an act that we didn't even commit? I don't understand it. I don't understand why the victim of these acts get blamed every single time. That's the thing that really, really bothers me. And that's the thing that really puts me up every time. Every time. And there's the stuff that happened to me, because like I said, the only reason why I'm talking about this is because this is something that I've already discussed. But I blame myself. 
I blamed myself when that happened to me. I felt like maybe I was too gullible. Maybe um, I was too nice. Maybe I put myself in that predicament. But all in all, I wasn't doing nothing but my job. It's a part of my job description to, to be nice and to show them where things are. I was going in the back of my head trying to figure out what I could have done differently. What did I do to make this man feel like it was okay for him to try to do that to me? And if you want to be honest about it, I don't think I've really gotten over that. This live right here has let me know that. I don't talk about it. And when I was in therapy, I didn't talk about it. I never mentioned it in therapy when I was in therapy. I never even mentioned it. I never talked about it. It was just something that I blocked out of my head. Guess something I just didn't want to deal with. I didn't want to relive. But some days I do relive it sometimes. Like sometimes I see it in my head. But I'll be okay. But I hope I didn't trigger nobody talking about this. I got a little bit too deep into this. This was supposed to be. But I can't say that this was supposed to be a fun live. Because ain't nothing fun about SA stories. Like, it's nothing fun about this. Like, nothing. I, there's no way that I can give y'all some entertainment with this. You feel what I'm saying? I can't do that. It's too much. And it's bringing up emotions that I've never tapped into. So, you know. But, yeah. That's pretty much it. That's all I really got for this um, live. I, I didn't mean for it to turn into this. I wanted to end this on a on an okay note. But, once again... I want to thank y'all for watching the show. We're almost at 50K. My goal is to hit it before this month is out. If not before this month is out, before 2014, 2024, I'm sorry, 2024 hits us. And we're less than, we're, where, where are we? We're like 130 something away from 50k we're almost there um like i said shout out to everybody that's been reaching out to me checking in on me because like i said i'm mentally drained i'm mentally vacant at this moment it's a tough fight but i'm gonna get through it shout out to the scotty gang um i want to also put something out here for you guys my moderators know this but I should be announcing something later, maybe within a few weeks, but my moderators do. Some of my moderators know. The, for those, the, the moderators that are in the mod group know. If you are a moderator and you're not in the mod group on Instagram, please let me know right now. If you got an Instagram, please put it in the chat so one of the moderators can add you to the group. Um, the membership, I know that I've abandoned it, but, um, I'm going to, I'm going to be posting stuff up in there. So I'm trying to figure it out because I haven't read the rest of my book yet either. And then on top of that, you know, with my friend dying and stuff, I, a lot of stuff got pushed to the back burner. So I'm sorry about that, but I will be posting stuff in the membership. Um, what else? What else do I need to say? Next year, I meet ups. Whenever I go out of town, whenever I'm in the cities that you guys are in, I intend on finding a little restaurant to go to, invite about 15 of y'all out if 15 is willing to come. And, um, and do dinner or lunch. 
because I know the first Scotty Gang meetup has to be in Atlanta. And I know that I want to do it at Blaze because they got a little private room in there. And I already know how to set up the reservations and stuff like that. Um, what I want to do, the cities that I want to do it in, I want to do the Scotty Gang meetups in ATL, Houston, um, Chicago, Detroit, and probably New York, maybe, and maybe LA. But right now, I'm going to start off in the South, and that is ATL and Houston, possibly Dallas. I don't really know. I don't know if I got a lot of people in Dallas or not, but right now the primary focus is ATL and Houston because I know that there's a lot of y'all in ATL and Houston, okay? So we're going to do Scotty Gang meetups next year when I go out of town and stuff like that. Um, What else? And with those Scotty Gang meetups, there may be other content creators there with me. Like, say for instance... I do a Scotty Gang meetup in ATL. It's going to be Scotty, but also Jamie, Sakina, House of Aaron, maybe Binge Worthy. Okay? And Jamar, of course. In Houston, Scotty Gang meetup. JoJo, Maddie, probably Mims, Rodney, you know. Um, Detroit, I don't know, maybe J. Lee, Bubs, um, Dallas, I don't think there's any, there is, me and Nisi, you know, something like that, you feel what I'm saying, so that's what we're working on, we're trying to figure this, this Scotty Gang meetup stuff out, but I definitely, I'm definitely going to start doing that. This next year. I see Q saying we need a Scotty Gang shirt. And we're working on that, by the way. That's another thing that I wanted to wait to talk about. I did not want to talk about that until I until I knew that we was gonna that, that I had it ready. But I'm definitely working on a Scotty Gang shirt for y'all. Um, me and my cousin, they got like a little t-shirt business. They came to me saying, that's why I asked y'all what are y'all three. Scotty quotes that y'all love the most. That's the reason why I was asking y'all that. Because we were trying to create a shirt for y'all. So that's in the works as well. Like 2024 is me trying to continue on with the Scotty by Nature brand. Um, polish it up. You know what I'm saying? Have more going on with it. We're going to keep the reviews going. We're going to keep the pop culture, celebrity gossip things going. But we're also going to go into more music. There's TV One. They just announced their unsung schedule. I'm going to be reviewing unsung. I'm going to talk with Calvin Michaels and see if we could do more musical collabs together. I don't know if we're going to go live and do them or I don't know if we're going to um, do them pre-recorded. But I want to get into the music, into my music bag, because those are the things that's most important to me. Um, Sharice and Too Feisty, they've been wanting to get this jukebox thing off the ground for so long. And we're supposed to did this back in, in the summertime. But with everything that has happened, everything has been pushed back. Who was wrong was supposed to be coming to an end in two weeks. I just started reaching out to the people for who was wrong. Young Fresh and New was supposed to be over with in two weeks as well. I ain't even reached out to nobody for that yet. So I'm way behind on stuff. Boys Night Out ends in january so i have time to work on who was wrong and young fresh and new and all of that like 20 2024 we're gonna have a lot going on um the chasing panel is doing very well uh, we're i'm very surprised that y'all love the panel and also much i was with that group besides chasing or whatever because that's basically boys night out 2.0 to be honest so I need to find something else to do with that group because y'all really, really love that group. And that panel is actually becoming one of my biggest panels because the Whether You Like It or Not panel is definitely the biggest one, but the Chasing panel is not too far behind. So, yeah. 
Um, the prelude has started back up again. Jamar and I are back doing interviews. Um, Latrice is an interview that we got in the works. Um, Boots from the Flavor of Love is another interview that we have up in the works. Um, so we're we're working. We're trying to start getting everything together. So yes, we're gonna do the Scotty Gang meetups next year. I don't know when we're gonna do it. Preferably the spring and the summertime. Um, Scotty Gang meetups, Scotty Gang t-shirts, Young Fresh and New Two, Who Was Wrong Three, the Jukebox, um, the Untitled Musical segment with Calvin Michaels that I, I want to do. I'm gonna reach out to him about it soon, and just all types of stuff like. We are an award-winning platform two times. So we have to do what we got to do to get everything together. Um, yeah. I don't know if y'all noticed, but I have approached my reviews and my lives in a different way. That's all I've been trying to do. And um, I hope you guys are appreciating that. And I hope that doesn't steer y'all away. I just want to be great. That's it. I just want to be great. I know I've been doing a lot of good stuff with my platform. It's been growing, but it needs to grow some more. So the only way it's going to continue to grow is if I continue to do things that are different. You can't stay the same because if you stay the same, you're going to be stagnant. And I never want to be stagnant ever again. When you get that taste of growth, you got to keep it pushing. But anyway, I think I talked y'all head off. I wasn't even intending on doing that, but I had to get my mind back together again, child. But yeah, with that being said, y'all, your boy is about to get up out of here. But before we do, we do have to pay our bills first. Okay, now speaking of the chasing panel, be sure to support our very own Tramiel. Okay, he has a brand new song out called Long Days. It's available everywhere. So make sure you guys are streaming it. Y'all better support our very own Tramiel now. He's very talented. Make sure you guys do that. And also, y'all, please make sure y'all support Bando. Bando is a very special person to me. Be sure to um, get his single, um, Bando's Dream. It's now available on Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube. And he has another song out, too, called DUI. And I think he has, and I, and you know what, to be honest, I would love for you guys to check out more of Bando's music. He has um, another song called Make It Nasty. Y'all need to listen to that. Cause yeah, that's the song that kind of got me. Yeah, um, yeah, but make sure y'all y'all support Bando and everything that he got going on, cause he does have a lot going on. So make sure you guys support him. Um, with that being said, your boy's up out of here. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, share this video, and also click on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops. And if you want to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter, my Instagram, and my TikTok will be down below in the description box. I am Scotty by Nature TV, and I will see you guys on the next one. Make sure you guys check out One on One tomorrow with Bundy Blue at 3 p.m. Eastern, okay? And I'm out of here to the next one. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.